Hey there, I am Jason, the creator of The Grey Rooms. Before we launch this preview story for your listening pleasure, I wanted to thank our patrons. Your support of my dream is still one of the most amazing things I have ever experienced. It is exciting to create this podcast and a bit scary as well. And it is overwhelming to see the support that we have received. Seriously, thank you. And as a patron, if I may, you get neat rewards and incentives like early releases of our episodes, extra bonus episodes for some of the tiers, merch, much more. This is a new experience for me. So your help, although not necessary, is greatly appreciated. This preview episode and the season opener are sponsored by Kathleen Clyde, Sergio Saucedo, I do hope I said that right, bro, Justin Thulu, Charlotte Norp, uh, from Denmark, Victoria Wan, John Murphy, and Mary W. Thank you ever so much for your kind support, your belief in me, and in the gray rooms. I will work tirelessly to deliver five-star audio fiction horror for you to enjoy. With that being said, let's get on with this episode. Thanks.
You know how someone who dies is said to have known or felt like that was the day they were going to die? Or how some animals can sense when someone is going to die so they sit with them until they do? I didn't get any of that. No knot in my stomach or pulling feeling at the back of my head telling me something was going to happen today. And there certainly hadn't been some sympathetic dog crying at my feet. The day was so much like every other day, it instantly blended into the background. I would probably have forgotten it in a week, if things had worked out differently. I do tandem jumps with new guys trying to get into skydiving who have to get in so many tandem and assisted jumps before they get their license to jump alone. I also jump with middle-aged divorcees trying to make their ex jealous by posting online how exciting their life is now without the other person. Working for the skydiving school affords me and my wife the opportunity to do what we both love most in this life, as often as we desire. Throughout my day, I usually tandem with a handful of people and have enough daylight to get myself a solo jump with my buddy Brad to unwind for the day. He's an instructor as well. Jumping at the end of the day also allows me to watch the sun setting behind the mountain range. The setting sun flicks its pink and blood orange tongue at the clouds and bathes the snow-covered mountains in an amber no human could ever mimic. Getting to watch the sun set from 15,000 feet is so beautiful and awe-inspiring, it never loses its luster. Someone didn't show up for their jump today, which is common, and that gave me enough time to get in a solo jump before mine and Brad's last one. The jump was flawless, everything exactly how it should have been. When I landed, I repacked my parachute and met with Brad to go up for our jump together. <laughs> Mike! It's looking like it's going to be another great close to the day. <laughs> Let's do this, brother. The sky's ours. Once we were in the air, I let Brad jump first, so we wouldn't have to share airspace on the way down. I rode the plane to the edge of the drop zone and jumped out into space. Brad would be landing by that time, which was fine by me. The sky was mine. While I watched the sun thin itself, setting the sky ablaze, I thought about my wife. She'd stayed home today with the stomach flu, but she'd be so excited for me getting an extra jump. Kim's the only other person I know that loves skydiving as much as I do. I even proposed to her while we fell 15,000 feet. We're actually supposed to come out here tomorrow and film some jump footage for our YouTube page. I was looking forward to seeing her tonight and discussing our days and how many times we're going to dive tomorrow. I watched the sun start to disappear behind the mountain tops and checked my altimeter. It said 3,500 feet, so I only had a few more seconds before having to open my chute. At 2,000 feet, I released my pilot chute to pull out the main canopy. It opened without incident, giving me a light tug as it caught the wind beneath its cells. But when I looked up to check it, I could see a tear towards the middle of my parachute. I likely would have been able to land safely, despite the tear. However, I didn't want to risk a broken leg or ankle, so I cut my parachute away. I reached up to my shoulder strap and pulled the ripcord. Immediately, the parachute fell away and floated off for me. I was upset at having to cut my chute, because that meant I'd have to go track the thing down, wherever it happened to land, and that would probably take up a good portion of my evening. I'd also have to pay to get my backup chute repacked, and that was another $200 on top of needing to get my canopy repaired. Now normally, when you cut your main chute loose, it's automatically supposed to pull your backup chute out. That didn't happen. 
I began to get nervous. Panic began filling my ears that I was almost unable to hear my own thoughts. You need to collect yourself and manually pull the backup cord the same way you teach new skydivers to do. The words forced themselves past the fear and into clarity in my head. I reached around my bag until my hand made contact with the emergency cord. Then, wrapping my fingers firmly around the cord handle, I pulled with all my might. There was no give or slack given to me by the cord. I tried every way I could to reach the thing with no luck. That was when I began to pray. Oh God, please. Oh fuck Jesus, please don't let me die. I will do anything if you let me walk away from this. Lord, I will change my life the moment my feet touch the ground and spend every day worshiping you. The blood is pulsing so hard in my head now. I can feel each heartbeat behind my eyes. There's water inside my goggles from crying and piss running up my torso and down my legs. My urine-soaked pants slap painfully against me, the fabric hitting and resisting the wind. My mouth and nose are oozing uncontrollably, caking my face and goggles with snot and drool. Fuck! I'm so fucking scared, Lord, scared of dying! Please don't let me die! I'm not finished living this life yet. I'm not ready to say goodbye. I've only had 26 years to live. Please, I can't die today. Don't let me die today. I have an automated device in my bag that's supposed to forcibly propel the emergency parachute at 750 feet in case something goes wrong. It'll hurt like hell, but at least I have some ray of hope. Something to keep me praying I'll walk away from this. Hey, Mike. Brad, talk to me, brother. Your chute's not out. What's, what's going on? Oh, God, Brad. I had to drop my chute and now my backup won't deploy. I'm praying my auto system kicks in at 750. Fuck. Yeah, man, those auto systems are reliable. Don't you worry, man. It'll be okay. Fuck! Holy shit, fuck! The auto didn't go off! Oh, God, I'm gonna die! Brad! Brad, please tell Kim that I'm... Falling. Written by Mike Lee. You can follow Mike Lee on Twitter at Mr. Mike Lee is Me. You can also check out his YouTube channel, Nightmares for Nightmares. That is Nightmares, the number four Nightmares. Brad was voiced by me. So, yeah, you don't need anything else. The part of Mike was voiced by Graham Rowett. Graham can be found on Instagram at G-R-O-W-A-T, G, Rowett, and on Twitter at Graham NY, obviously for New York. Feel free to follow us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash the gray rooms. It's not necessary, but anything is awesome. Also follow us at the gray rooms pod on Twitter, if you already are not, and feel free to keep your ear to the rail, because more is coming. Have a good night.